tribal trails, tribal trails. The Son of God, He is near. He chose to walk with us. These tribal trails, tribal trails, tribal trails. Welcome to Tribal Trails. Today we're in Prince George with Henry McKay. Welcome to Tribal Trails, Henry. Thank you. Uh, can you tell us about your childhood of growing up? Yeah, I was born in Terrace, BC. And I was, I, I was born to uh, very young parents. They were probably about 16 years old. Mm -hmm. And they were unable to take care of me. And I was put into foster homes at a very young age, and I was probably for about three or four years, I went, bounced from one foster home to another. Um, I also had two, two sisters that are twins, and they ended up uh, moving in to the same foster home when I was about four years old. I was about five years old, and there was a family from Prince George that was looking to adopt uh, one child, and they almost gave up, but God had a plan, and they phoned up uh, this family in Prince George and said they had three kids up for adoption, and they came to Terrace, and they they just had this feeling like that they needed to adopt us. And I think it was in the early spring um, when I was adopted. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. Um, I was adopted into a white family, and they already had three kids, all older than me. And they, we started going to church, I think, right away when I was adopted. And I started going to the Nest Lake Bible Camp. Mm -hmm. um, at a really young, young age, I accepted uh, Jesus into my life, mm -hmm. but I don't think I fully understood what that meant. Like okay. I kind of said the prayer, and mm -hmm. but I kept going to church with my family and had a lot of really good friends, um, and had a lot of fun with my family. Had really loving parents. Um, it was always looked after really well. Mm -hmm. um, I think I was about 12 years old and the pastor of the church took me aside and asked me what, what a Christian is and if I understood mm -hmm. and I couldn't really answer that. So he gave me a Bible and he explained it to me what being a Christian is about. It's about okay. having a relationship with God, not just saying the prayer and that's it, but to actually read your Bible and to live, put it into your life. When a person newly accepts Jesus into his life, it starts the process of becoming the person God wants him to be. In Philippians 2.12, it says, Therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. The Apostle Paul wrote to the believers in Philippi to encourage them to work out their salvation. What does salvation mean? First, let's make sure we understand its meaning. Salvation is the present experience of God's power to set us free from the bondage of sin to develop a meaningful relationship with the true and living God. So the first part is to be saved from our sinful and unforgiving state that leads to death. When we become Christians, a follower of Jesus Christ, we don't instantly become a godly person. That's why we need to grow in knowing God. As Jesus put it in Matthew 5:48, be perfect therefore as your heavenly Father is perfect. And that's what working out your salvation is all about. Jesus saved us by willingly going to the cross so that we can escape from the eternal punishment in the lake of fire. 
how can anyone refuse such a great salvation? If you want to know how to have a personal relationship with Jesus now, give us a call. We would be very glad to answer any questions that you may have. If, you're, if you are still unsure, listen to this next song. There's a story old that has often been told of how our Savior died. As they nailed his hands, he cried, they don't understand. As the blood flowed from his side How can you refuse him now? How can you refuse him now? How can you turn away from his side? With tears in his eyes on the cross where he died how can you refuse jesus now as he hung there on the tree he prayed for you he prayed for me there was no one his pain to relieve before Give them peace. How can you refuse him now? How can you refuse him now? How can you turn away from his side? With tears in his eyes on the cross where he died. How can you refuse Jesus now? It was right after high school. I worked for a year just around Prince George, and then I decided to sign up for the Canadian Armed Forces, and I... Mm -hmm. Just before I left, the church prayed over me, and I was baptized at Nest Lake Bible Camp. Mm -hmm. As soon as I went into basic training, um, I kind of fell away from God. I kind of stepped away from Him, and I started living like the same lifestyle as everyone there, and I, um, getting into alcohol and and uh, just like smoking cigarettes and. After the 10 weeks of basic training, I went to Gagetown, New Brunswick for about six months and the same thing. I was, I'd actually, I'd go to church on Sundays because that would give me a break from army routine and I played my guitar uh, with the worship team. But I, like I knew God was still speaking to, through me sometimes, mm -hmm. even no matter what I was doing, because I knew that God still loved me. and. There's times that that God really protected me from when I put myself into danger and, mm -hmm. and harm's way. A lot of stupid things. Okay. Can you give us an example of what happened that um, he got you he yeah. saved you? I guess there's a few times where I had consumed too much alcohol and I kinda got myself into a, a bad situation like fighting people or, or like there's times that I should have been like really badly hurt but mm -hmm. God just was with me and protected me okay. from things happening like that. When I went to Edmonton to finish my my three-year contract in the army I started getting in contact with Christians. There's some friends that I had met um, 
that lived just outside of Edmonton, mm -hmm. and they were a really strong Christian family. And I would actually escape the army life, oh, yeah. and I'd leave and live with these this family in their house. They mm -hmm. even had my own bedroom, and I was like a brother to their to their little kids. And um, I started going to church again with them. I got became a member of a church. Mm -hmm. uh, it was called Beach Corner Evangelical Free Church. Okay. I think it was just outside of Spruce Grove, kind of between Spruce Grove and Stony Plain. Mm -hmm. But I started becoming, I was a, became a youth leader. I was really, really involved with the church and it was, life was going really good. But I, there was still, I think Satan was like attacking my weakness. And, but during the weekdays I would, I would still kind of go out partying sometimes and then I'd come back on the weekend mm -hmm. and I'd hang out with the, mm -hmm. the kids again, youth group and uh, the church people. So during the time where you were with their friends partying, yeah. did you know at that time that it was wrong, that God was convicting you? Uh, definitely, yeah. Mm -hmm. I would, usually when I'd go out partying, I would just kind of tell God like, okay, just stand aside for a bit. I'm going to go hang out with my buddies. And, but I knew it was, it was really tough on my parents, especially my mom, seeing, just seeing me kind of slip, mm -hmm. slip away and like be kind of consumed by alcohol. In Jeremiah 10, 23, it says, O Lord, I know the way of man is not in himself. It is not in man who walks to direct his own steps. We cannot know our way or direct our own steps. Only God can when we submit our lives to him. In Isaiah 30, 21, it says, Your ears shall hear a word behind you saying, This is the way, walk in it, whenever you turn to the right hand or whenever you turn to the left. We need to learn to listen to God's gentle whispers and, and be attentive to his leading. May the prayer of the upcoming song encourage you to draw closer to God. Draw me close to you Never let me go Lay it all down again To hear you say that I'm your friend Help me find the way Bring me back to you Tell me, know you are near. 
Like right near the end of my my three-year contract with the military, I had, had signed up for um, going to Bible college because I knew there was an emptiness inside of me and I, I needed to to study God's Word and just kind of build a foundation again. And I just wanted to, to be, to change as a person and to be who God wanted me to be. And, for God knew his people in advance, and he chose them to become like his son, so that his son would be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. Um, well, I had finished, totally finished the military. I got out the honorable discharge, and then I went, I probably only came back to Prince George for uh, two or three months, and then I went to Alberta to, uh, Peace River Bible Institute and really changed my life altogether. I was surrounded by by Christians everywhere, teachers and students, and there's a lot of students came from different backgrounds, um, and that was that was challenging to be to have such a routine life. Like every day, I wake up and you'd you'd have to go running and do all this exercising and. And then I went straight into Bible college, and it was mm -hmm. it was really kind of relaxed. But I I still kind of kept myself structured. I'd I'd always exercise every morning. That I think that helped me learn more mm -hmm. during school. Yeah, I think that God was really working through me, even at the Bible college, because I I was already about twenty about twenty three years old, twenty four. And there was a lot of kids, or not kids, but 19 right out of high school that would come and they they just came like straight from their parents' house and then they were in college and I had felt like I'd had a more, a lot more life experience and was had kind of a, a leadership and the, but I had some really good mentors um, mm -hmm. through Bible college. Usually it was, it was from uh, some of the soon-to-be graduates. The righteous should choose his friends carefully, for the way of the wicked leads them astray. Friends that you had in the army were involved in drinking, and as soon as you went to Bible school, you had friends that were walking in the Lord. Can you tell me if it's important to have the right friends? It's definitely a good I, I believe that it's still good to have friends that are non-Christian because mm -hmm. like God created everyone in His image and God can still speak through you to those friends. It's just, it's important to, to, to stay away from walking in lifestyles that don't honor God. Um, I still have friends that are non-Christian, but as now that I'm married and have a family, I mm -hmm. have to limit, like, what well, have to be really careful. Like, like I hang out with um, Christian families, like young families, and yeah, I guess, and just to make make sure, I've had to give up friends in my life. It's been really tough to do that, but knowing that that certain friends can kind of lead you astray. Um, God has definitely, he's blessed me with really strong friends, Christian friends, or even non-Christian friends. Um, but just to always make sure that you do what is right, do what God wants you to, and not what your friends are tempting you to do. And just, and there's many Bible verses that, that uh, also that I try and live out in my life. Uh, I know that that God kind of, he can protect us through different Bible scripture because just that any specific time, there could be a Bible verse uh, that could come to mind because you're mm -hmm. like the human brain is amazing. It can, it can uh, remember things mm -hmm. and kind of bring them 
like God brings these verses and or things that we've learned from other people or at church and it, it just pops up in in your mind and um, speaks through us and we kind of decide like do I want to honor God or or am I going to um, live in the flesh or like to choose to sin. Um, when did you quit drinking and the partying? Was there a time in your life that you just decided I'm going to follow the Lord for, uh, with my whole heart. When was? Can you tell me when that happened? Yeah, um, I'd say at least six or seven years ago, mm-hmm. and I, I was kind of fed up with kind of being a lukewarm Christian. Like go to church on Sundays. I considered that a weekend warrior. Go to church and kind of put on the face and mm-hmm. just say like. So yeah, it was about at least six years ago when I had, I just, I just totally changed my lifestyle and I started reading my Bible lots and praying in the morning and I'd find that that would help me a lot. Um, even just with, with non-Christian friends or at work, especially because at, at work you can kind of hide yeah. who you are and just kind of be more worldly, but mm-hmm. I really found when I would start my day out doing devotions or spend time with God every day, that that would really help me in relationships with family and friends. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's been, it's been really awesome and encouraging uh, to be able to help others, to help uh, other have two younger siblings, been able to encourage them um, through their life, um, and just just meeting uh, just little kids around our uh, complexes where I live. Uh, I can really, it's a lot of fun just to spend a bit of time with them, um, playing around outside and.
what advice would you give a person who is leading two lives, like wanting the Lord, but also wanting the world? What advice would you give that person? I would just encourage people um, to really, if you're going to be serving at a church or like with a youth group or whatever it is, like to make sure you're doing it 100% and not with kind of like part of your, your heart, but like everything because God can really work through you a lot more when you're like fully doing it for God and that your attitude and your heart is is in it. Well, thank you, Henry, for sharing with us and God would continue to bless you and your family. And thank you for sharing with us at Tribal Chills. Draw me close to you. Never let me go. Lay it all down again. To hear you say that I'm your friend. Help me find the way. Tell me.